Hi guys, so in this video we are going to have a look at one problem from our online platform which is to generate parentheses in Python. So uh, what this problem is all about, this problem basically uses the concept of recursion and backtracking. So in the problem statement it is given that you are given an integer n and you have to print all pairs of parentheses which have, oh sorry, all such uh, parentheses in which you have n balanced parentheses, right? So n is 2. So you have to print this is a valid combination, even this is a valid combination. If n is 3, you can have many more valid combinations. For example, this is a valid combination of uh, parentheses and this is a balance, right? And then this could be 1, this could be 1, right? And you, you could have more of, as well, right? Because something of this sort right so you have to print all such pairs all such uh, strings of parentheses which are balanced right this is the problem shape so if you are new to this problem just spend two minutes on thinking how to solve this and then we will talk about the solution all right so now let us discuss the solution The idea is to use recursion and backtracking we will use. Right? So what I can do is I can start from a string which is an empty, right? So I can start from an empty string and at every point I have two options, right? So in my string if it has n characters, right? So there are n characters. So at any place I can either put the uh, left bracket or I can put the right bracket, right? So this is the opening bracket. And this is a closing bracket, right? So I can put, I have to put opening and closing brackets like we do in subset generation, right? So if you generate all possible subsets, then you can filter out the valid subset. That is the brute force approach. A better approach would be you generate only the balanced case, generate only for the balanced. So what would be the condition if we want to generate only for the balanced case? At any point, number of closing brackets should be less than equal to opening brackets, right? So this this is the condition that we should follow, and we will stop when number of closing brackets become equal to n, right? And this should be less than equal to n because if in, it, n is given in the question, right? So we are given the value of n. How many pairs of brackets we want in a given string? So what I can do is I, have, I can maintain a count, count of opening brackets and I can also maintain a count of closing brackets and I can put a closing bracket at a given point if the count is less than or less than the number of opening brackets. Only then I can put a closing bracket. Alright. So in the beginning this is also 0, this is also 0. So what I will do, I will put a opening bracket here. I put a opening bracket here. Now at the next position, at, at the next index, I can either put a opening bracket or I can put a closing bracket. Then again, right, so what will happen now is, so again we will make two calls. Now we have two opening brackets and zero closing brackets. So what I can do is, I can put one closing bracket here. right? And I cannot put one more opening bracket because the number of brackets, opening brackets maximum is 2. Right? So if n is 2, I cannot put more than 2 opening brackets. So I have only one option left to put one closing bracket. Then I call to the, for the next index. Right? So at this index, what I can put is, I can only put a closing bracket. And in this case, I can make two calls. Can I put an opening bracket? Yes. I can put an opening bracket. Yes. Can I put a closing bracket? No. Because number of closing brackets is not less than the number of opening brackets. So there will be only one call and from here I will make one more call which would be to put one closing bracket. right? Because you cannot put an opening bracket here. Right? So these will be the two uh, pairs that we will be generating.
now you might ask where is the backtrack so if you have studied a little bit of backtracking in plus plus or in college what happens is suppose we are going from here to here then this branch is getting executed then this branch is getting executed and from here you backtrack right suppose i have stored these brackets in a python list so what you will have to do when you are returning from a function call and you have to just pop it you have to remove it because the output could be different right when you are returning from here to here you have to remove it right so you have to do popping then you are going into this branch right and then you are putting you are you have to remove this bracket right then you will put this bracket right and then again you go to this direction you you add this then you go to this direction you add this bracket and when you go back you have to remove this one when you go back you have to remove this one. when you go back you have to remove this one when you return from here you have to remove this one right so this is where the backtracking comes into picture so idea is suppose you have a list so list is, list in python is a, like a array right so i am storing brackets in the list so when i am going from a one recursive branch to another branch the output could is different i want list to be of this sort right let's say i want list to have these kinds of brackets right so what we have to do is while we are returning from a function call we have to pop these brackets right? so let us see how we can implement the same in code right so let us implement in python right you can also do it in c++ or java and the concept will remain the same so let's have a look so i'm going to code it at id coding blocks id okay so let us start with the code right so the first thing is i want to code it in python and then we have to write one function to generate the parenthesis right so let us define one function define generate parenthesis and i am accepting the number of opening brackets the number of closing brackets and the value of n and i am keeping a string right i am keeping a string i am keeping a list right so i am not keeping a string i am keeping a list to have what all brackets i have generated so far right? so we will have one base case the base case would be if the number of brackets right? so if the number of closing brackets becomes equal to n we have to just print our result and return it so we will print the list and we will return why i am not using string because string is not mutable you cannot update the contents of the string right? so string is not mutable that is why we are not using so else what we have to do else we have to check for few conditions right? else is not used. maybe you can have so if the number of opening brackets is greater than the closing bracket then you can definitely put a closing bracket right so you can definitely put one closing bracket and you can also have or you can have more opening brackets this we will handle in the next part so you can definitely put one closing bracket which basically means s dot append and here i give the closing bracket and you have to make a recursive call to the function so generate parenthesis will get calls number of opening brackets will remain the same number of closing brackets will be incremented by 
n will remain same and the list will also remain same and then after the function call is over right so remember what we did in recursion is suppose we were here right and i put one closing bracket at this point right so number of opening bracket was 2 number of closing bracket was 0 so i may, i put this bracket and i call the function right and i ask the function to fill this position at this position the number of opening bracket is 2 the number of closing bracket is now 1 right? so this is what i have done here and what you will do when you are going to return from this function right? after this function call is over you have to remove this bracket which we had added in the function right? so this is the bracket you added and when you are going back right so this this step is called back tracking when you are going back from a function call you have to remove this bracket so what i am going to do is i am going to do s dot pop this bracket will get moved right and we will have one more case right so we, remember we have to make two calls but the condition is you can put a closing bracket if it is if the count is less than the opening bracket and you can also put one more opening bracket if the count of opening bracket is less than the number of brackets you want then you will do s dot append one opening bracket and then you will call this function generate parenthesis and you will have the number of opening brackets incremented by one number of closing brackets will remain same n will remain same and s will also remain whatever it is and similarly we will also do backtracking after this function call so we will do s dot so this is the code right and now let us try to test our code right? so let us try to test our code and let us also return from the okay so let us call generate parenthesis number of opening bracket is 3 closing bracket is 0 uh, both are 0 and number of brackets we need is 3 pairs and s is a empty list so you can see this is the output what we are getting right so but i want this output in the form of a string not in the form of a list right so what i can do is i can use the join function to uh, convert this list into a string right so all the characters of the string are joined right so we will get a string right so let us run the code again so yes you can see so you are able to generate all the pairs of brackets and suppose you want to also take input the value of n so you, you will write n equals to integer and that's it and here you will supply n and let us run the code so let's say input is 2 yes so you are able to generate the brackets right so you can submit this on the online platform in the language as python and you are done so i hope you got got this concept and i hope you will be able to solve the rest of the problems from assignment and try out the new topics right so we, all the test cases got passed so thank you guys for watching i will see you in the next video